Good morning. Please, I can pull it in the room when you do. Keep up on all the events taking place here at the parish. Please, wait to be dismissed at the end of Mass. This will help everyone if we keep an orderly and safe dismissal. The ushers will let you know when to exit the queue. The Knights of Columbus will be selling the annual calendar raffle tickets after Mass. Excellent prizes to be won. Small amount for tickets to turn into big money won. The votive candles have returned, and the candle may be lit for your prayer intention before or after each Mass. Just inform the usher. The prayer intention book is next to the, next to the candles by the statue of the Blessed Mother. If you would like to register with the parish, speak to an usher after Mass, or go to our new website where you can register online. And Stations of the Cross will take place here on Fridays at 4 p.m. Have a blessed Mass. For our intention, we pray for the eternal rest of the soul of the Savior. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear friend of God, today is the second Sunday of Lent. As we come before the Lord's presence, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess in the name of my brothers and sisters that I am greatly sinned in my thoughts and my words and what I have done. reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one, 
whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place in which God had told them, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not take the least thing to him. I know now how you devoted you, how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from you your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again the Lord's messenger called Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did, not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and of the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall bear possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Response of the song I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believe, even when I said, I am greatly afflicted, precious in the eyes of the Lord. Is the death of his faithfulness. I will walk with the Lord in the land of the enemy. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will walk with the Lord in the land of the My vows to the Lord I will pay. In the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. I will walk before the Lord in the land of Israel. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all. How will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who will with us. Who will condemn? Christ Jesus, it is who died, or rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God who indeed intercedes for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of heavenless glory. Praise to
Jesus, Timothy, Peter, James, and John, and led them up the high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no pillar of air could reach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. The My dear people of God, when life seems to have no meaning for us, we really don't know where to go. Sometimes the darkness that we encounter in life prevents us from looking beyond from seeing what is ahead of us or what is beyond of us. Most especially when there seems to be no success in what we do. When there seems to be no kind of love even in our marriages and in our relationships. When we struggle to find the meaning of life in our lives. But then, my dear people of God, life is something that we have to cherish. Because life is given to us by our Creator. And so, no matter how dark the situation is. No matter how obscure the situation is, we need to continue to trust and hope and have faith in God. This is the example that Abraham, our father in faith, seemed to be giving us. In the first reading, here was a man who had encountered Yahweh and who the promise had been made to him. The promise was that his descendants were going to be like the son of the seashore. But let us remember that he had no issue. The only issue that he had was from a slave girl that he slept with. And so how was God going to fulfill the promise that he made to him? But lo and behold, the promise was, was fulfilled. Sarah in her old age conceived and bore a son, and so Isaac was born. Then, this like the hair, the apparent hair of Abraham, who was going to fulfill the promise that Yahweh had made to him was Abraham was asked to go and sacrifice this son. 
my dear people, if it were if it were you, how would you feel? You were going to ask God so many questions. Perhaps you wouldn't even dare to go. You would disobey God. Because you really thought this is the son, and this is the son who is going to fulfill the promise that you have made to me. When I sacrifice him, what will be the next? But my dear people of God, Abraham listened. And lo and behold, he took the son, went to Moriah, not even knowing the actual amount that he was going to sacrifice the son Isaac. But then he hoped, believed, and trusted in God. And to cut a long story short, God prevented that from happening. Instead, God gave a, a ram that was in the thicket, and that ram was sacrificed instead of Isaac. My dear friends in Christ, unless we trust and hope and believe in God, we are not going to find the actual or the real meaning in life. Faith in God will unfold to us what really God is for us. Without the faith in God, we will walk through life and we will think that things are as easy as they come along. But we will not know what is really hiding behind the life that we live in. And once Abraham was faithful and loyal to God, indeed that promise was once again re echoed. And as we know, now we talk about Abraham, the father of the faith in our lives. The story of Jesus taking the his three beloved disciples or the apostles to the mountain is an, another indication. Don't let us forget the fact that in Caesarea Philippi, uh, Peter had been able to actually reveal who Jesus is, the Son of the Living God. Then, just thereafter, Jesus predicted his suffering, death, and resurrection. What was Jesus saying? You are the Son of God. You have the power of everything. You can command the angels. You can do anything. But now look, what are you talking about? A cross? A shameless death? A hopelessness? No, that can't be. But Jesus re echoed it. We are going to Jerusalem, and there the Son of Man will have to suffer, be put to shame, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. That is the way of the cross. And yet we are God. And so this, the gospel reading for today, when Jesus took them to the mountain, revealed, just gave them a foretaste of what actually heaven will look like. And so Peter will explain, why don't, why don't we remain here and build three times, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. We know Moses was the giver of the law. Elijah was the prophet, and Jesus the Savior. And after some time, you know, according to the text, Moses and Elijah faded, indicating that Jesus reigns supreme. Jesus is the Savior of the world. Therefore, he is both the prophet, uh, 
the Lord Lord and the Savior and the prophet. He represents all these three aspects of life. And yet, therefore, sometimes we might think that life has no meaning. Sometimes we are hopeless about some situation that we encounter. Sometimes we are faced with difficulties in our lives. Sometimes the people that we trust so much will betray us. But that is how life is. We can only accept these challenges when we focus our life on God. With faith in God, everything becomes meaningful. And so Lenten season is a season of us to walk back to the mountain. Like Abraham to the sun to the mountain. Like Jesus to the apostles to the mountain. We have to walk to the mountain. Coming closer to God, deepen the relationship between us with God so that we can actually know the real meaning of life. And so, on this mountain, we need to go with our problems, go with our difficulties, the hardships that we face. Sometimes we need to go there with the pride that has consumed us, the arrogance, the disrespectfulness, the greed, the lust, everything. We have to go to that mountain so that we can come down trusting that the Lord will really help us to do away with them. It is only when we try to move away from our comfort zones that we can really know the true meaning of life. Listen to Peter. Lord, why don't we remain here? He was overwhelmed. The fourth taste of heaven. Jesus, dazzled white, and the prophet being there, things changed. For him, it wasn't like what he used to know before. And so why? Why are we going down there? When there is darkness, when there is hatred, when people are even opposing uh, your message and are not ready to listen to you, why do we go there at all? Let us remain here. And Jesus told them not to tell anyone. My dear people, comfort zones. When life is so bad, we, 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 we have comfort in life, we think that is the end. Unless we have uh, we sacrifice and move on, that is what we can really know the actual meaning of life. Sometimes it's not easy to move from our comfort zones to a place of difficulty or hardship. But when we have the attempt, when we make the attempt to do that, then we will encounter the God who so much loves us. Yes, indeed, there are many potholes in there. But then we need to struggle. We need to walk through it with faith and with God. The cross is the way, whether we like it or not. It's part and parcel of life. It is only when we accept the way of the cross, it is then that we can move on to Jesus. It is then that we can move on to God. And so we need to do that. When Abraham listened to the voice of God, the promise was fulfilled. Abraham being the father of faith. He is a patriarch, the father of Judaism and father of even Christianity. When Peter, James, and John listened, they are the apostles that we so much cherish today. When we listen, we will be free. When we listen, we will understand God. When we listen, 
we will have hope. When we will listen, grace upon grace will be on us. Almighty God, be with us. May He continue to strengthen us so that as we journey through the wilderness, we may accept the challenges, the difficulties, the many things that are hindering our relationship with God. Let us be willing to surrender them, knowing that God, God will not leave us alone. If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all. How will he not also give us everything else along with him? Lord bless you. Inspired by Abraham's faithful confidence in the Father's love and concern, we bring our prayers to God. For missionaries and caregivers who serve abroad and at home, we pray to the Lord. Lord For a special increase of vocations to the priesthood and the consecrated wife, so that all generations will proclaim God's love for us. We pray to the Lord. The Lord is our prayer. For all who are experiencing a crisis of faith, may they be inspired by Abraham's witness of faith in God. We pray to the Lord. The Lord is our prayer. For all those serving in the military, that they can meet their work soon and return home safely to their families. We pray to the Lord. For all our relatives and friends who have died, that they may be welcomed by the angels and the saints in heaven. We pray to the Lord. For the intentions of our prayer line, our prayer intention book, and those who have received prayer blankets. We pray to the Lord. For the special intention that we hold in the silence of our hearts and minds. We pray to the Lord. Lord our prayer. Faithful God, you never abandon those who need you. Help us to recognize your love in our daily lives and follow your holy word. Through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, the fruit of the earth and work of my hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, work of my hands, it will become for us our spiritual offering. In a similar way, when Sapa was sent, he took the chalice and, giving you thanks, he said a blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for me, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. The mystery of faith. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the support of the Lamb. 
Let us pray. As we receive these various mysteries, 
we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us Christ's soul on earth to be partakers again now of the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Bless your faithful, we pray, O Lord, with a blessing that endures forever. And keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed in his own body to the amazement of his apostles. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our salvation is over. Let us go to love and save the Lord. Thank you. Amen. Say my prayer. Sunday.